This is Electric Universize, and today I'm going to narrate the source of the problem extracted from Recovering the Lost World, a Saturnian Cosmology by John Cook. Appendix E, Polar Relocations. It is ubiquitous for the oldest legends to state that the Earth at one time flipped over, although this is also stated as the interchange of north and south compass directions, or east and west. Velikovsky's Worlds in Collision included many examples. I'll list some below, but ultimately they are confusing, for no particular time period is pointed to. Most are generic statements often introduced with at one time. Velikovsky attempted to use this information to suggest that the Earth indeed did turn over and placed it in the era of 1500 BC, during the exodus of Moses. There are only a few references which might point to 1500 BC, and even if coupled to the devastation and orbital changes of 1492 BC, they do not add up. The Earth never turned over, although it likely did so partially, but it sure looked like the Earth flipped over. The compass directions were interchanged, and the sun now rose where it had set the previous day. I'll suggest that nearly all the references to a change in compass directions or the earth turning over refer to the events of 3147 BC. Other changes refer to 2349 BC, to 747 BC, and to 686 BC. The details of the narratives almost always point to actual events, even if dates are never given. For people throughout the world, who understood the large globe above the north horizon as the land of the gods, which was attacked by another god in 3147 BC and subsequently removed to the night skies of the south. This scenario was entirely different from our concepts. What was seen was the sudden relocation of the land, earth, in the north to a location in the south. Saturn had been seen from below, surrounded by its rings. When Saturn was moved to the south, being flung away from its close orbit around the sun, it took on a completely different look. The Earth, released from the grip of Saturn, immediately started to move up toward the sun. Within weeks, Saturn was seen from a completely different perspective. For the first time, Saturn was seen with its rings edge on, or nearly so. The change over a period of weeks or months was noted. Saturn had teetered and fell over. Saturn, the land, had fallen, had flipped over. The 5th dynasty Egyptian tomb texts of Unas, 2347 BC, relate that His Majesty, Osiris, died when he fell on his side at the riverbank. The river is the ecliptic, not the Nile. The Maya Chilambalam books read, Then Oxalahuntiku, Saturn, was seized, and he was thrown on his back as well. The removal of Saturn to the south skies was also seen as a reversal of north and south, or east and west, but there was no east and west. That is a modern concept. There was only the main direction where the gods resided and the land, and the left and right. All the legendary snippets which have come to us have been translated to our conceptual base, were already recast in terms of East and West. In Mesoamerica, at a much later time, the main cardinal direction was the East, where all the planets and the stars could be seen to rise throughout the year. At 20 degrees latitude, the Sun and the planets do not swing as wildly between Southeast and Northeast and rising as they do at Northern latitudes. The North and South in Mesoamerica were known as the Left and the Right east was the forward direction. One can easily translate such directional concepts to the period shortly after 3147 BC, when the left and the right direction had interchanged. There are similar concepts of rising and setting which have been altered to what we consider the correct order of nature. But as Talbot and Cardona have pointed out, we use rising and even east and setting for words that originally meant brightening and dimming as Saturn was experienced first during the night and then during the daytime. Lastly, once we arrive in the period after 1500 BC, we have to allow for metaphorical use of the Earth turning over as a substitute for calamity. 
The simile is a giveaway. The Egyptian scribe Ipur, page 120 of Worlds in Collision, Pocket Books edition, wrote after 1500 BC, The land turned round like a potter's wheel. But Velikovsky inserts the word over in brackets after the first quoted use of Ipur's turned round. A potter's wheel does not turn over. It rotates. Subsequently, Velikovsky simply quotes turned over rather than turned round. Page 88, quote, According to the Lapland cosmogonic story, the angry gods spoke, I shall reverse the world. I shall bid the rivers flow upward. I shall cause the sea to gather itself up into a towering wall, which I shall hurl upon your wicked earth children, and thus destroy them all in all life. Jibmel, with one strong upheaval, made the earth lands all turn over. Page 104, quote, the tradition of the Kashina, the Aborigines of Western Brazil, is narrated as follows. The lightnings flashed and the thunders roared terribly and all were afraid. Then the heaven burst and the fragments fell down and killed everything and everybody. Heaven and earth changed places. Nothing that had life was left upon the earth. The references are both to the events of 3147 BC and 2349 BC. The towering wall is the fall of the Absu in 2349 BC. Similarly, bursting of heaven details 2349 BC. Page 149, quote, Pomponius Mela, a Latin author of the first century, wrote, the Egyptians pride themselves on being the most ancient people in the world. In their authentic annals, one may read that since they have been in existence, the course of the stars has changed directions four times, and the sun has set twice in the part of the sky where it rises today. The reference is to the brief reversals of the travels of the sun, twice in the 7th and 8th centuries BC, well within memory. Others had been forgotten. Herodotus presented the same information as Pomponius Mela in the book Histories. The change in the direction of the sun's travel accounts also for the four changes in the dome of the stars. There is nothing in this statement that reversals were permanent. The movement of the stars was very real, however. Page 120, quote, The magical papyrus Harris speaks of a cosmic upheaval of fire and water when the south becomes north and the earth turns over. The reference is to events of 3147 BC. Page 120. Quote, the texts found in the pyramids say that the luminary ceased to live in the Occident and shines a new one in the Orient. Velikovsky adds, after the reversal of direction, whenever it may have occurred, the words west and east were no longer synonyms and it is necessary to clarify references by adding the west which is at the sun setting. It was not mere tautology, as the translator of this text thought. The references to events of 3147 BC, especially if a new one is correctly translated, the new one is Jupiter. Page 121, quote, In the Hermitage Papyrus, Leningrad, 1116b recto, also, References made to a catastrophe that turned the land upside down happens that which never yet had happened. Velikovsky added, quote, It is assumed at that time, in the second millennium, people were not aware of the daily rotation of the earth and believed that the firmament with the luminaries turned around the earth. Therefore, the expression, the earth turned over, does not refer to the daily rotation of the globe. Nor do these descriptions in the papyri of Leiden and Leningrad leave room for figurative explanation of the sentence, especially if we consider the text of the papyrus Harris. The turning over of earth is accompanied by the interchange of the south and north poles. True, these are not figurative descriptions. They were actual, but the references to the events of 3147 BC, poles were not known to the ancients. Directions were. Page 121, quote, Herakte is the Egyptian name for the western sun, as there is but one sun in the sky. 
It is supposed that Herakte means the sun at its setting. But why should the sun at its setting be regarded as a deity different from the morning sun? The identity of the rising and the setting sun is seen by everyone. The inscriptions do not leave any room for misunderstanding. Herakte, he riseth in the west. The sun is generally misinterpreted as our current sun. In most societies, the sun was Jupiter during hundreds of years after 3147 BC. But the sun which rises in the northwest is Saturn. Saturn rotated counterclockwise in a circle around the North Pole. During the day, it would show up faintly in the northeast, like the new moon against the blue sky, and then travel counterclockwise above the pole star. At nightfall, Saturn would be in the northwest and would brighten because it was now illuminated by the normal sun. This is the location, of course, of the setting of the normal sun, at least in summer at northern latitudes. Saturn would then proceed to rotate toward the east below the pole star. This is also why many nations of the eastern Mediterranean started their day at nightfall. This is the confusion we see about the later, regular sun rising where previously it had set. It might also apply to Jupiter, which traveled on the ecliptic, and thus would be seen to rise in the east or northwest, not in the northwest where Saturn had first brightened, in effect rising. Page 122, quote, Plato wrote in his dialogue, the statesman, I mean the change in the rising and the setting of the sun and the other heavenly bodies, how in those times they used to set in the quarter where they now rise, and they used to rise where they now set. This is a very general statement, which could be in reference to a number of eras in the past. The heavenly bodies is our terminology. What Plato meant is unsure. Probably he meant that Saturn used to rise, that is, brighten, while in the northwest at the start of nightfall. Page 122, quote, According to a short fragment of a historical drama, Atreus by Sophocles, the sun rises in the east only since its course was reversed. Zeus changed the course of the sun, causing it to rise in the east and not in the west not in the west is added to the concept of the change in the sun zeus here is jupiter who removed saturn the sun from the northwest in 3147 bc and substituted himself as the sun during the following 500 years but now appearing as rising in the east skies as the earth overtook jupiter on its travels on the ecliptic Every night for months, Jupiter would thus also travel from east to west across the night sky. There is a similar problem with the Greek name for the lands northwest of the eastern Mediterranean, Europe, which was the land of the sunrise. This has nothing to do with the sun rising in the west. It is the brightening of Saturn, the sun, before 3147 BC, seen in the northwest from Greece. It is amazing that these concepts were extant nearly 3,000 years later, and the name is still in use 5,000 years later. Page 124, quote, Caius Julius Solanus, a Latin author of the 3rd century of the present era, wrote of the people living on the southern borders of Egypt, The inhabitants of this country say that they have it from their ancestors, that the sun now sets where it formerly rose. Page 125, quote, In the Syrian city Ugarit, Rashamra, was found a poem dedicated to the planet goddess Anat, who massacred the population of the Levant, and who exchanged the two dawns and the positions of the stars. I would guess this is Venus, and the massacre refers to the blood in the sky, the day of the dead, in 2349 BC. The two dawns is then likely a reference to the destruction by Venus in 1492 BC, although I have no idea what this is about, except, as I have earlier suggested, the fact that the Earth perhaps seemed to have partially inverted at the time of the Exodus. The apparent near inversion was due to the lack of sunlight and the change in climate, which lasted some 40 years as the Bible and Mesoamerica tell. Page 120, quote, 
The reversal of east and west, if combined with the reversal of north and south, would turn the constellations of the north into constellations of the south, and show them in reversed order, as in the chart of the southern sky on the ceiling of Senmut's tomb. The stars of the north would become the stars of the south. This is what seems to be described by the Mexicans as the driving away of the 400 southern stars. The 400 southern stars, or the 400 lost boys, are recognized from Mesoamerican Maya sources as the Pleiades, as well as all of the southern stars which showed up at the same time in 2349 BC. But 400 generally meant lots of in Mayan. It is often translated as millions, but this probably deals with the change in the look of the sky in 685 BC, which I have detailed in the chapter, The Sibylline Star Wars. The graphic depictions of stars by the Egyptians have a long tradition of utter disinterest in the heavens. Starting from the sixth dynasty, most often stars are depicted as so much wallpaper in tombs. Consider also the inaccuracies of the Egyptians in depicting the circumpolar constellations in circa 1500 BC and the use of 24-day months shown in Senmut's tomb circa 940 BC. The reversal of the southern constellations cannot be taken seriously. It can only be accomplished by stopping and reversing the Earth's spin. Let me point out that if the Earth turns over, the sun and the stars would still rise in the east and in the same order. On the other hand, a reverse chart does not surprise me at all. I should point out that the star charts manufactured today often reverse directions also, and have done so consistently since late antiquity. Page 126, quote, The Eskimos of Greenland told missionaries that in an ancient time, the earth turned over and the people who lived then became antipodes. Page 126, quote, In the tractate Sanhedrin, of the Talmud is said, seven days before the deluge, the Holy One changed the primeval order and the sun rose in the west and set in the east. This is the condition directly before and after 3147 BC, when Jupiter yanked Saturn from its orbit, while the earth released from below Saturn continued on a path around the sun. Saturn, held to be the sun, Ra, was seen in the northwest before relocating to the south skies and diminishing in brightness. Jupiter, the bull of heaven, outside the orbit of Earth, had already blazed up and subsequently was recognized as Ra, the sun. I have earlier taken note of the fact that Jupiter apparently blazed up seven days before the flood of 3147 BC. The directions east and west are likely to be correct as the initial stage of the seven days of blinding light. I've used this relationship of Saturn and Jupiter to plot the changes in 3147 BC. Page 132, quote, On the Andaman Islands, the natives are afraid that a natural catastrophe will cause the world to turn over. Page 132, quote, In Greenland, also the Eskimos fear that the earth will turn over. The references are again to the event of 3147 BC. Page 132, quote, The Egyptian papyrus known as Papyrus Anastasia IV contains a complaint about gloom and the absence of solar light. It also says the winter is come as instead of summer. The months are reversed and the hours disordered. This refers to a period of heavy clouds or a shadow lasting for years which appeared after an interplanetary lightning strike traveled through an ocean to cause vast clouds in the atmosphere, or across forests to cause carbon dust to be lifted into the stratosphere. This would also happen when the Earth's polar axis took a long time to swing through a loop, which in effect would pass Earth through all the seasons in short order. Gloom, of course, would make even a summer feel like winter but the complaint is likely about the large climactic change after 1492 BC, and possibly a longer than usual gyroscopic reaction since Earth was impacted with a repulsive electric shock just below the equator in the eastern Pacific. The lever arm of the electric force was short, but it also hit closer to the Earth's center, causing a 30% increase in the orbit. 
This in itself changed climactic conditions worldwide. Grapes no longer grew in Scandinavia. Page 132, quote, The breath of heaven is out of harmony. The four seasons do not observe their proper times, we read in the texts of Taoism. The references to events of 685 BC. The Taoist doctrine is specifically a reaction to the changes of that year and a suggested cause. Page 315, quote, In the tale of the southern Ute Indians, the cotton tail is the animal that is connected with the disruption of the movement of the sun. There is one instance more in the Indian story of the sun being impeded on its path and the ensuing world conflagration. Before the catastrophe, the sun used to go round close to the ground. The purpose of the attack on the sun was to make the sun shine a little longer. The days were too short. After the catastrophe, the days became longer. This beautifully conflates two events close together in time, the earth shock of 686 BC involving Mercury and the change in its axis in 685 BC. The longer days are in reference to the year after 685 BC when the days would be longer and the sun would ride higher in the sky. Check this with the program sun.html for the latitude involved about 30 degrees and an axial inclination of 30 degrees. The Utes at the time lived much further north, where the difference between the travel of the sun and the summer would have been even more striking. Page 317, quote, Hindu astronomical tablets composed by the Brahmins in the first half of the millennium before the present era show a uniform deviation from the expected position of the stars at the time the observations were made the procession of the equinoxes being taken into consideration. Modern scholars wondered at this, in their opinion, inexplicable error. In view of the geometrical methods employed by Hindu astronomy and its detailed method of calculation, a mistaken observation equal to even a fraction of a degree would be difficult to account for. In Jaminiya Upanishad Brahmana, it is written that the center of the sky or the point around which the firmament revolves, is the Great Bear. There are two ideas expressed here, that the axis of rotation of Earth was in the Great Bear before 685 BC is entirely correct. The second piece of information about tablets which show a uniform deviation from the expected position of the stars is also correct. These are known as the Panchasiddhantaka tables recorded before 685 BC but not published until A.D. 600. They were saved for us despite the vagaries of time, when all its companion observations were probably discarded a thousand years earlier. Page 315. We possess the Chinese records of the longest and shortest shadows at noontime. These records are attributed to prior 1100, but the shortest and longest shadows recorded do not really represent the true lengths at present. The old Chinese charts recorded the longest day with a duration which does not represent the various geographical latitudes of their observatories, and therefore the figures are supposed to have been those of Babylonia, at 32.55 degrees latitude, borrowed by ancient Chinese, a rather unusual conjecture. Again, probably entirely correct for the era before 685 BC, but these certainly were not borrowed records from Babylonia. Considering that throughout most of antiquity, the earth was held to be shaped like a pancake, it is inconceivable how statements about this pancake get transformed into a sphere by modern translators. I would suggest a wide range of misreadings based on our preconceptions of the earth as a globe. Some of the above material does not deal with the earth turning over, but has reference to the change in inclination of the earth's axis in 685 BC, something Velikovsky and most other investigators were not aware of. I encourage you to read more of John Cook's work by visiting saturniancosmology.org.